community design with Lego series play. This is an approach in which a community can design itself using Lego pieces carefully used in a such a way that it uh, uh, take advantage of this historical role that play has in the development of human cognition and human social skills. Children, they basically learn how to interact with other children and with other adults through play. And these um, make-believe games are very important to develop imagination and creativity skills. And that development does not cease uh, with uh, uh, childhood. It grows and develops further throughout adulthood. However, it takes a different shape, a different form, a different appearance. But we could go as far as to say that sports are a kind of uh, structured way of playing. And that's why sometimes uh, the athletes, they celebrate their achievements in these kind of make-believe <laughs> uh, rituals, like the Brazilian national team was doing the last World Cup, has been criticized. But on the other hand, they are also remembering ourselves that sports comes, uh, at least historically and genetically, culturally, from childhood play. Well, I'm going to focus on a specific toy used to support several kinds of plays. It's called Lego. It's a system to build many kinds of toys. And this uh, Lego patent um, that was registered at, in the middle of the 20th century um, highlights the modularity uh, characteristics of this material, this playing material. And by following different simple rules that are attached to the material itself, so the kid does not need to learn some abstract building um, rules before they actually start trying out. They can just right away use the materiality of the material to teach them to learn how to build. So it's basically a system that has imminent features that can be learned by doing. So many different kind of emergent performances can come out of uh, uh, this system. Well, LEGO has evolved to become one of the largest toy manufacturers in the world. However, in the 90s, they uh, faced a crisis because of the growing competition between video games and um, LEGO systems and other toys. They didn't have the same kind of appeal that video games have. Uh, at that time, uh, they tried first um, to have more complex and integrate challenging puzzles uh, for Lego sets, but that didn't work. The company was almost going bankrupt. But at some point, the president of uh, Lego discovered or had this idea that maybe Lego itself could be used to insert more creativity in the meetings at Lego. So he basically partnered with two university professors who developed uh, this uh, method called Lego Series Play. And these professors, they wanted to encourage in-house innovation at LEGO, but after that, after trying out inside LEGO, they also extended further the method so it could be applicable to any kind of organization. And LEGO went as far as to, um, well, LEGO went as far as to cre actually create and produce and manufacture a LEGO series playing introductory set. However, there are many other sets and custom tailored sets for LEGO Series Play. I use myself uh, um, a custom tailored LEGO Series Play set based on Duplo. But there are also books and conferences and trainings. I'm going to present a very short um, introduction to what LEGO Series Play can be in the context of community design. But I have to say that this has been very important for LEGO Revival. The company uh, grew out, out, out because okay they come out with these ideas of um, having uh, heroes, licensed heroes from many, from existing brands to be themes for new sets. And that um, exploration is synthesized in this Lego movie in such a nice way. The contradictions also of playing and working is also part of this movie, which is very interesting. To watch and I recommend as a additional material for this if you haven't watched before. Well, 
Lego Series Play method has many different uh, techniques, but the most important one is the metaphor. So what you build with Lego Series Play is not a realistic uh, one by one or one by ten or whatever kind of scale you're going to use it with their object that you're representing. You are using a analogy scale. So what you represent is never something related to what you want uh, to relate your object. So your presentation is different from the object of the representation. And that's called metaphor in linguistic studies. As you can see here in, the, in this ad that Lego has explored um, a piece of um, blocks that has a certain shape that does not resemble um, dinosaur, can become a dinosaur if you play out, if you add a story to the uh, set connected together in that way. So there is some kind of effort needed in interpretation because it's not obvious, not explicit from the shape of the model, what is it about? And that's where creativity uh, has space to flourish. And storytelling is the second most important technique which connects so uh, nicely and tightly with a uh, metaphor. Um, in uh, design uh, uh, in general, design research in general, and scientific science in general, there is always this challenge of how can you um, present your findings in a way that someone who hasn't gone through the process can understand what is the um, consequence and its implications and the importance of those findings. And many scientists and design researchers refer to this diagram as um, there are many different uh, versions of it. It be actually became a meme in the internet. So data is just these pieces so, uh, um, scattered together and sorted. You organize them by some kind of rule like color. You arrange them, you connect them together so they can have uh, express some kind of a quantity and you present them visually neatly through graph charts. But the most powerful way how can uh, someone who hasn't gone through the process to understand is through storytelling. And Lego um, with those metaphors, Lego series play with those metaphors that we have been speaking before, it can be a very good ground for that story so that the speaker when they telling the story does not get um, lost by telling the story. Prof uh, uh, people who are amateur storytellers, sometimes they they diverge from their stories, they go elsewhere, and you cannot follow what is the story about. But then if you have some physical um, anchor of your discourse on your hand, which is the, the, metaphor, the Lego metaphor, then uh, your story gets uh, more clear and people can follow it. So there are many different ways how you can apply Lego Series Play. I'm going to first focus on a few applications that pertains to community design. The first one is the most obvious one. So the community wants to express their values to some kind of a design product, in this case, um, a visual identity. I was in partnership with uh, community members of Curitiba Traffic Education Schools in Curitiba back in 2016. And I proposed that this community should design their own logo instead of having an expert like me or my students at university. And they got really excited because that school really only existed because of the community of teachers in public schools, of guards, of drivers, of um, social um, uh, workers who use that school to um, generate some several kind of uh, education and political activities related to traffic, uh, safety, health, um, and first and foremost, traffic education. And each co-designer in a uh, workshop materialized their perception of the school's value to their community using a metaphorical model. And as I mentioned before, the metaphor materializes something which is hard to express through speech to discourse and it creates an anchor so people can convey which kind of value that they want to express in that uh, visual identity by using this Lego metaphorical model. So it's very powerful to see so quickly the diversity and the different perspectives and expectations of that uh, visual identity project but also more deeply 
um, the institution itself that this community was eager to support and develop further. And having this kind of experience, by the way, strengthens the bond of those community members who are mostly working as volunteers in these kind of projects. So it's also a fun way of engaging them. I'm, gonna go, I'm not going to go in details on how this process unfolded later on. There were several phases that didn't involve directly LEGO. However, LEGO Series Play was definitely the spearhead of this process and it set the tone of what this kind of co-design activity was going to be up. It's really a very good way of starting. Some people call it icebreaker. I would say it's much more than that because we actually can take the the LEGO Series Play result further to the next step. So all of these values that they represented using LEGO, they had to find more imagery that they found in uh, scrap paper that they could use to create a collage. But the next steps I'm not going to describe right now. You can check this project on my website if you're curious later on. What I want to emphasize is that LEGO was key for us to get to this EP trend visual identity that the community felt to be included. So as you can see, the final logo has three different uh, persons with different colors and they are embraced by some kind of a dynamic activity which matches somehow traffic, but a kind of a roundabout traffic that is more safe, that just represent this kind of a gathering together that the community wanted to happen in that school. But LEGO Series Play can do much more than that. This is just the most obvious way of using LEGO Series Play for design. Think about design also producing maps or things that are um, not totally known or things that are known by some people but other people are not aware of. Well, this is the application of a LEGO Series Play as a map. And if a community has many different activities, it's large, there are many people working in different projects, this happens so often that people get uh, disconnected and they are not aware of what they, they collectively are building together. In 2020, um, the Federal University of Technology Paraná Industrial Design Department, where I, I'm sorry, Federal University of Technology Paraná, um, the Industrial Design Department, where I was working on, um, asked me, could you help us figure out all of the outreach projects that we have currently and try to promote synergies between them because the federal government want us to emphasize outreach more in public universities. All right, so we use LEGO Series Play as a mapping activity. So each one of these circles has a set of outreach projects that a certain professor in this uh, department is uh, pushing forth. And all of these strings, they connect the potential synergies between those projects and those synergies are the topic of future conversations between these professors. I have to say, uh, later on, I'm going to touch upon this story, but one of these synergies that we found out through this mapping was the possibility of um, working in outreach projects that are designing against oppression. Several professors who were working on that came later together and we found the laboratory, laboratory of design against oppression. We also use Lego. I'm going to get back to that story in a few minutes, but before that, let me introduce you a little bit more of eerie understanding of this situation because it's not so commonplace to say that uh, you can design a community, right? The community is more uh, related to organizing or to historic accumulation of culture, but it's also about design and any community is always designing itself. That idea has been described and pushed forth by this marvelous book, Designs for the Pluriverse, written by uh, anthropologist Arturo Escobar. And he's making the claim that a community wants to um, become always more than what it is, and it's always trying to redesign itself to have different spaces, different activities, and different, even different bodies, different presentations of the body. This is all part of this community, what I understand by community design. Some people understand it in a narrow way, uh, but this following Arturo Escobar's and other authors that I deal with, community design is the design of the community itself. And since we are talking about something design itself, we are in the realm of meta-language, but also in the realm of meta-design. 
Meta design is the design of a design. So a community is a design. And when a community design itself is designing the design of itself, right? And that generates complex arrangements of many different entities that are hard to get them all on the same page and, and to make sense of all of the relationships between those different elements in a community. This kind of diagram that I just draw here is easier after you went through the process of co-designing, after you investigate, after all of these uh, people have somehow been summoned in your de community design process and it's not usually uh, available this kind of overall picture of how the, des the next design will be this can only but this can come out of a Lego series play session and here I'm gonna touch upon the very uh, basic uh, let's say distributed cognition principle behind it why does it work so well for community design. It's because when we are dealing with um, these complex situations, there's a lot of tacit knowledge, or let's say in another way, knowledge in the world that is not articulated into language yet or into thoughts. And you wanna point and use and make appropriate that knowledge because you're trying to redesign that knowledge itself, right? Because it's part of the community. And if you have laid down those things in a table um, roughly matching physically or logically how they relate to the world, it's almost like you have the world um, on your hand. So for us, for us to manipulate and to relate while we speak. So it amplifies, it creates another layer of uh, meaning uh, beyond what we say. And our language gets, um, our spoken language gets so quickly attached to this material language that Lego series play affords. Uh, we don't, should not forget Lego Series Play is a metaphorical language and things are represented um, with plastic <laughs> materials in a board, in a table, in a hand, um, does not reflect exactly what they are in terms of shape or what is somehow uh, close, similar in terms of shape, but they may represent a, a, a more deeper, a deeper concept and that's hard for other people to follow because when people are exploring these new ideas, sometimes they come up with these concepts that are hard to convey. And then if you use the Lego's metaphorical models, maybe other people can reconstruct your idea in their own ha heads. For example, here, there's this person uh, playing Lego series play and he's pitching out a new concept for uh, service. And he says, the same truck that picks up food on a farm can deliver garbage. And... <laughs> collaborator, the co-designer next to him, says, what do you mean? And the other one didn't even dare to say. He was just totally lost. What the hell is he talking about? And then he starts to explain now, not just using speech, but also using Lego language. And then he points out and he say, imagine that you are here. And here is not just the Lego, but here is what the Lego is representing. So he's talking about Imagine that you are here in this road from the countryside towards the city. So he's already locating um, his idea in a certain relationship between the um, different entities of the community. And you mean, and then he also mean uh, put yourself to drive shoes. The person who is driving that little car that is on his end. So there's a lot to be said only by making gestures uh, with the Lego series player in your hand. The final video that they were recording, which is an amplified version of LEGO Series Play, where you tell a story by recording with your smartphone. It's very practical, very easy to do, very funny. You also don't need to show people in the picture, and then people can play voices as characters. It's so much fun doing this. But in the video that you can see the steels uh, reading from left to right and from top to bottom, it tells a story of um, a driver who pick up uh, food at a, a local farm uh, producer and deliver that food to the restaurant and collects food waste from the restaurant and brings back food waste to the farm and to use as a kind of a fertilizer or other means. And that's a kind of a concept of a reverse logistics service. Well, it's complex even in its name. <laughs> How to convey that if not through Lego Series Play. So you can speed up conversations especially with people that are not aware of this kind of service, that have never experienced 
a similar concept like this. Well, I'm going to push a little bit forward in the theorizing what's going on here because there is an actual theory, a very complex one about meta design. I'm just going to pick up two different concepts from this theory that are useful for explaining and shedding light how Lego Series Play works, which is meta object and meta space. According to Caio Vasson, a Brazilian researcher who wrote the best um, re um, writings about meta design that, as, that I know, he says a working object that is understood as a representation of the object that is coming to an existence is a meta object. So it's an object that does not exist unless it is only in the design phase. So it's a representation of something that's about to become real. But then you can change before it becomes real. That's the advantage of having a meta object. And instead of building the object right away, you represent it and you manipulate. That's basically what we do with sketching in design. That's with modeling, with prototyping. However, here with LEGO Series Play, we can build a metaphorical model, which is somehow much useful in early phases of the design process, sometimes called the fuzzy front end of innovation. But once we start manipulating a meta object, a meta space around this object emerges because since you are in a fuzzy front end, there are many possibilities to explore for this new idea, this new concept. So a meta object appears in interaction with a meta space, which refers to the space of possibilities of the objects becoming a series of possible relationships of form, structure, function for the same object. This is what uh, we have concluded after building upon Vassan's uh, work. Together with um, Larissa Pasqualin, we published the paper, and I'm going to present the model in a few minutes. But let me apply these two concepts to our previous example. In, in the case of explaining this uh, reverse logistics service, the, um, the main character in our story is using the driver as a meta object to tell a story and to represent not just the driver or the car, the driver's car, but really the service that the driver is getting delivered. That's the most important thing is manipulating the service. And service is always tricky to manipulate as a design object because it deals with human relationships. And Lego Series Play, again, it's very useful for service design for that reason because relationships cannot physically be represented, but they can metaphorically be well represented. And meta space is another way of representing those relationships. And meta space creates a context for this meta object. In that case, the meta space or the different uh, points of interest in the, the road between countryside and this urban environment where the restaurant was located. This is the model that Larissa Pasqualin and I developed in 2021 to explain um, what were the physical or the material or the relational properties that LEGO has that enables such an exploration of meta spaces. Why is that so useful to use Lego instead of other materials like Play-Doh, like Post-its? We couldn't have used those materials, but they always have their bias that comes down to their physical properties, what you can do, what you cannot do physically with them. And we have scrutinized and found out that modularity, uh, different kind of colors and bright colors, simplicity of building and unbuilding, unmaking, making and unmaking so quickly and fast, with Lego, Lego, and that's the reason why we explored it so much. There are other reasons, I'm not gonna dig into that, you can just check the paper published later on. But imagine that farmers and restaurant owners, in that previous example, would actually join that, that particular co-design session. At that session, only design students or experts were participating the driver didn't have a, a, a full body person there to represent uh, himself or herself. And then, if we try doing that, welcome to what uh, I'm calling participatory meta design. So, this design actually includes people that are being designed. So, the community designs itself right away with their own hands. And that experience has been realized so well in so many different ways at the laboratory of design against oppression. That stemmed from 
that uh, first uh, industrial design department uh, outreach map project mapping activity that I showed before. So I met Marco Mazzarotto, uh, actually I met them before, but at that specific moment, Marco Mazzarotto and, and Claudio Bordin, the three founders of the Laboratory of Designing and Suppression, we came to the conclusion that we had to unite our outreach projects under a single umbrella, which became known as LADO. And in LADO, once we start uh, having face-to-face um, -face activities, because there was a time when we were during the pandemics uh, working online, but once we got back to our lab physically, we actually started this process of community design using LEGO Series Play. And we tried to build this meta, huge metaphorical model that would explore what would be our dream for LADO to be. And that activity was well supported by one of our brightest students, um, uh, William. Uh, yeah, he was um, interested on uh, community design and he took uh, the, the space design of the laboratory as his final work in industrial design, uh, uh, bachelor in design uh, education. And William Bisotto, he uh, documented this process marvelously in his final work. It's also published as, uh, as, um, a piece of, as a journal paper, a conference paper. He has made a, a lot of effort on making it available. I'm going to focus on one specific part of uh, our work that pertains to that model, how that model has been realized in our uh, uh, future outreach activity. So the model had multiple aspects of the dream. Man, first of all, it's a model that separates a uh, world. Well, actually maps a separation that already happened in Brazil between the us and them. The us were the leftists where we were located. I mean, well, Lado was founded by leftist professors and leftist students supported at the beginning. But we were concerned that the rightists had to be engaged in this kind of dialogues to, in a way or another, otherwise our society will stay divided and this extreme far-right politics would only win by this fragmentation. So resisting Bolsonarism uh, was definitely our priority there and what we could do in design for that. And we also had other ideas and concepts that will be uh, important for Lado, like liberating the press, connecting the press, developing critical consciousness of the world, taking to the invisible, talking to the invisible people in society, which are sometimes uh, supporting right-wing politicians and making these people that are alienated aware of their alienation. They don't need to become rightists, but at least they need to know a bit more about how they are being um, politicized in this society. We developed many other approaches for dreaming and redreaming our dream. <laughs> so we were always dreaming a dream at Lado, and so we had this um, diverse chair project. We had this uh, recapitulado moment of reflecting what we were doing and what, what the new dream, sonios means dream, so we, we actually uh, tied together our dreams on the roof of our lab, later on the, the dream fall on someone else's head uh, by accident and we had to redream it again. So many different things happened, but Lego Swiss Play was again a spearhead of that process. And an important thing is that at Lado, uh, we don't want to be like the oppressors in any way. And that also means having a different subjectivity on how we approach ourselves and our visions of the future. And dreaming is very important for that. Paulo Freire once said, Paulo Freire, a very important Brazilian educator who wrote the pedagogy of the press and inspired us in many ways to open this laboratory. He wrote once, when education is not liberating, the dream of the oppressed is to become the oppressor, to replace the oppressor, to become as um, rich, as powerful, as mean as the oppressors are in our society. Basically, this kind of dream um, does not really change the structure of society. So we need more powerful dreams that are completely different than that. And for that, we need to have practical experience of designing with the oppressed, by the oppressed, for the oppressed. So we have to design differently. And let me give you an example how, again, we use a Lego series play for that. First of all, let me talk different in relation to what? This specific project stemmed as an alternative to the design of the oppressors who uh, design a community out of nothing in the um, outskirts of Curitiba. Well, Curitiba had a lot of uh, very violent slum um, removal actions. It, this is still going on because 
the rightists are more powerful in that city and they believe that uh, people who don't have a place to live in the city should just leave the city uh, or they may be even killed. Some people are murdered in these uh, slums and occupations, unofficial occupations and it's a very dangerous situation there because they don't understand that if the city is attracting workers demanding people to work and people are moving the city can only grow and bigger and become more thriving economy if you actually find public housing solutions for that and the city is very slow in this process but at this particular situation they were they were not so slow but on the other hand they made us a bad um, they made a, a poor design because they designed public housing to relocate these people that came from other parts of the city in the outskirts with improper infrastructure they didn't have good bus routes going through the this uh, public housing unit but the worst thing at all is that once they they built it in 2013 and they delivered the keys to the families to live there they said now it's yours you take care of this whole housing unit it's a private entity uh, like a gated community and you should have your own guards, your own security, your own garbage collection system which does not make sense, did not make sense to the inhabitants there they didn't have that in the slums because of the lack of this kind of structure so they have a hard time on um, making the transition to become self-sufficient in terms of being a community that can manage those things all together and they have a very hard time on organizing and creating um, uh, like uh, associations of people who live there to take care of those issues. Uh, we met this, uh, some of these people from this community throughout Lado and they were part of a project called Uniperifa that tried to connect university with the periphery of Curitiba and these people they approached us to see whether we could uh, support their co-design activity in their community using uh, materials and approaches that we had at the university and on the other hand, uh, we were also interested in our students learning what is community design in a community that is facing harsh oppression. So in 2022, we partnered. We had this meeting where we uh, mapped their community, the Konomini Guasu community. And we began by map mapping the community matter space, including not just physical appearance, but also its social texture. Like who were the leaders, who were uh, the followers of those leaders, how did they relate, which kind of conflicts were um, there and in these kind of um, interactions we were playing a bit of theater with those puppets, those uh, dolls because we wanted to explore the positionality and positioning of these actors in relation to each other after, <laughs> after we did this uh, very cool explorations and we discussed and we explored there's conflicts and how to approach, how to talk to these people in the community and get them buying in doing some community actions because the community was dispersed and fragmented because of the bad community design that City Hall has done so they had to somehow yeah, nurture a new dream of being together and after in, uh, engaging to this kind of theater-like um, experiences, then we start mapping uh, the actors in space and finding out what were the objects that they were disputing and the kind of uh, problems that they were talking about. We identified several sustainability issues like um, garbage uh, piles that people were using in uh, environmental protected areas and other issues like water contamination. But we decided that um, we had to focus first on something that would generate a kind of a, a ripple effect uh, on the community so that they, it would generate a lot of visibility in that first community action, which was focusing on the community center, which was not being used um, so often. And they decided, uh, the students together with the community members, decided that they would first of all paint and, and create a sense that this uh, uh, community center has been renovated. Well, this has been a very successful community action, well planned, used uh, uh, Lego Series Play. But Lego Series Play is not just a meta object then, because if the, in this case people are actually committing to do something about it, 
and it's something that grows and develops out of those sessions, then let's say that uh, Lego Switch Play is also a shared object in the present. Instead of waiting for it to be built, at the moment when that is being uh, designed, it is already something that is shared between people. And that insight stems from my past experience on my PhD research, where I found out that um, contradictions of building a hospitals, they could also be an object of collaboration among multiple stakeholders with different expertise. And that would sometimes lead towards a destructive collaboration, sometimes towards a synergetic, constructive collaboration. Depends on the kind of approach, design approach. Uh, my thesis is called expansive design because it describes the approach that is constructive, that welcomes in contradictions. But uh, while playing this board game that I designed to convey this concept, the expansive hostel board game, which is, by the way, inspiring to Lego because you can also build a um, hostel with modules, um, well, people would realize these different uh, design approaches. And in this paper published in the Engineering Project and Organization Journal, we analyzed a team of players who managed to create a co-design or a participatory design activity involved engaging the health practitioners with the engineers to create a more synergetic hospital that would uh, treat patients in the best way possible. Um, and making that shared object, unfortunately, is not enough to foster community. There's something more about it. Community is, is all about subjects. It's about having a collective subject or shared subject, a way of being together and acting in concert. And that has to come to consciousness. So people must understand that they are not just a, a sum of different parts. They are more than a sum of m multiple parts. They are a community and not just a bunch of individuals together. And sometimes if you use Lego series play and, and series games like the expensive hospital, you might lead towards a more competitive or individualistic route. It, it, there's nothing inherent in those materials that can prevent that. So from happening because this contradiction is actually part of a capitalist society and it's just manifest in any capitalist interaction even if you are trying to prevent capitalism to flourish. In the expensive hostel game there is actually a financial incentive to work, play like that and that's where the conflict of the game uh, uh, flourish because the game gets exciting because you never know if someone is collaborating truthfully and um, in a honest way or if they are appearing to be collaborating just to show their vested interest later on in the game. And uh, we also show the example of another team who play very, very competitive, very meaning, always looking for them individually. They at some point created a cartel between the constructors, the builders, and they fixed up the prices and market uh, dynamics ceased, stopped and became very corrupt. <laughs> And our hospital, as a result, went bankrupt. It's funny to talk about it uh, as, a, as a game, but in reality, these things are, uh, sometimes happen. A lot of uh, our interactions are um, uh, jeopardized by this contradiction. And learning how to deal with that contradiction is very important in design education. That's why uh, our students at Lado has this kind of experience. And that's why we also need to go beyond Lego Suits Play and explore other methods I'm not gonna delve into so many of them, just the three uh, to give a glimpse of how we managed uh, uh, dealing with collective or shared subjects. I love theater of the press and especially those dramatic games like the knot game that we have to unknot a big uh, uh, human knot without um, releasing our hands together. And it uh, requires a lot of coordinate and movement of, for multiple bodies for us to figure out how to um, not and, and return back to the initial circle that participants were positioned. We also have had marvelous experience on weaving parangolas, which are these colorful and multi-layered capes that Elio Oitisica once created for celebrating popular culture in Brazil and the presence of them in the arts, but then we appropriate that for design education and express political concerns about the future of design. And once we did that in our classroom in 2019, our students became so, uh, became so hopeful about this future that they felt like they had to de 
give this huge, huge hug, this big hug, and become this one big body, this women body, because the students realize that they were the majority in that class, uh, hoping for that different future. Um, a future where design will be more politically wise about fighting oppression. And the last example is conduct an online. We had this workshop at participatory design conference with people that were interested in commoning and designing commoning and commoning design. And these participants, at some point, they were requested to design um, a collective body of themselves. How would they be represented as one, as in unity, uh, being, uh, given that they all come from different parts of the world, or even different worlds, if we go in a pluriversal approach. How could they represent a single entity that would be able to act in concert and do things like uh, conduct research and publish papers? Well, actually, we had a name already. It's, it's called PD Commoners. It's a uh, pseudonym that uh, we sometimes underline in our writings from this collect self-managed research group collective. And at some point, we decided to do that on mirror board using a, a, a very simple collage approach where each one drew a different part of their bodies and then th those bodies were overlaid and the resulting is very chaotic and monstrous because it tried to uh, um, welcome those very difficult to mend difference. We didn't want actually to mend any difference and to have anything coherent or consistent. Therefore, we had this monstrous representation of what, who PD commoners is. Well, first, well, last but not least, effect, effective community design increases shared objectivity and shared subjectivity, meaning that um, it's not about having great ideas or having great plans or even having great designs. It's pretty much about having a sense, a, 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 a stronger sense of the reality that surrounds that community and have a stronger sense of who that community is as a collective to transform that reality. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching up to here.